What's up, guys? SK here. And last time I promised, we're going to take a look at the character skills for the upcoming MMORPG Wayfinders. However, I first have to announce that I found out some information from the Discord team. And what I did ask was, um, well, we were having a conversation about the early access monetization. If it was going to be a monetized early access that allowed people to enter the game early by paying, which I did speculate in the previous video that that might be the case because that's the case with a lot of games coming out that have came out recently now when we got response from the mod you're gonna see it in the top corner i have to edit it in that side over there somewhere somewhere in this corner over over here somewhere up there there's gonna be a little pop-up that shows the, the text that we um that we received from the mod but he was saying pretty much that um that the game is going to be free to play regardless of early access early access is going to be free to play um, it's just not going to have as much uh, content as when the game launches fully open. So, um, yeah, that's good news. They're, they're fully going free to play with this. Like everything is free to play, which is great. I'm loving the fact that they're 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 taking a stance in this and keeping that stance. That stands in line with what I said, like yesterday, what I said with on um, the D.E., um, how D.E. takes a stand to free to play. I love the fact that they're doing this. And this is something that we need to see more companies do. They're gonna set the tone for MMOs in the future, um, going forward, because a lot of MMOs feel like they, a lot of companies feel like they have the right to charge people to play seven days early to get a head start, because they know players are competitive. They know players want that early edge. Players want that that in the know information beforehand, before other people can get in and take advantage. And they're not allowing that through monetization, which, like I said, I'm glad for that. I love the fact that they're doing that. But let's go ahead and get into the information that we got to go over today, which is going to be the character skills um, and their weapons. We're not going to go into the character backgrounds, uh, but we're just going to go over their skills and their weapons. So let's start with Wingrave. I'm going to pronounce it Wingrave because thinking of Wingrave, Wing Grave, Wing Rave makes me think like you know wings and ravens. Like boom, 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 boom. And he's just flapping his arms the whole time. And that's a bad sight for my head. I don't know why. So I'm gonna go, we're going gonna to call him a wind grave. How about that? Um, so you're going to see his complexity here, which is going to be the his, um, his, sorry, not his complexity. This is complexity, which is like he's not going to be that hard to use, I guess. And then, of course, he's going to have, um, you're going to see his parameters here. He's good at support, good at defense, which you're going to see in the skills. So the first skill is going to be righteous, um, righteous strike. Any enemy cause an explosion of healing. A healing energy to shoot out and heal Wingrave and nearby uh, nearby allies. Like that is first of all, that's not even the best part. Like all of this, all of this kind of goes together with support and just defending. Radiant pulse forms a divine shield that blocks projectiles and boosts defense of allies standing behind it. Man's a tank and a healer. What is going on here? Judgment marks enemies for judgment. Anyone hitting the judged enemy will restore their own health so he has a heal over time well, that counts as like a i'm guessing it is gonna count it's kind of like a drain it gives a drain effect like a heal per damage drain effect um so that's pretty cool as well he's he's definitely a major um he's, if he's the only support in the game then he's gonna be a heavy pick for a lot of people a lot of people don't like to play support but we'll see what happens with this divine Aegis, a powerful barrier that makes anyone standing in it immune to damage and deals them oh and heals them over time not deals them heals them over time that's that's busted first of all that's that's really busted like the amount of people playing is like we see that we see this is going to be an open world style game the amount of people playing together with wingrave is like you're going to be having immortal wingrave runs that's what it's going to be there's going to be like like five people running wingraves or however the big the however big the parties can be just running wingrave back to back and it's going to be kind of it's going to be it's going to be very ridiculous the Wingrave signature weapon is Bastion. The names of celestial architects are woven into the steel, and a champion with faith can still call on their light. And his weapon build is going to be Power Bash. Shield Bash to do massive impact and guard break on um, damage. That's cool. Huh, I'm guessing guard break is like a defense down, unless there's like a um, if the unless enemies can like you know block for themselves and take less damage, then it's probably what guard break does. We'll find out when the game comes out. There's going to be a lot of fighting when the game comes out in this. Um, but um, yeah, let's go on to the next character, which is gonna be Silas. Silo, not Silas. 
I mean, um, Silas from, um, never mind, leave that alone. We're leaving that alone. Uh, Silas, a tactician, his complexity is level two. Um, these are his parameters here support, control, and range. Now, his first skill is going to be the firebomb. Um, he's going to toss a firebomb that ignites enemies, dealing damage over time, cause a chain reaction with oil bomb. So, oil bomb is going to leave a pool of oil in front of Silas, slowing enemies and causing them to take additional damage. And then you can hit him with the firebomb. You see, it makes it explode right there. And that's probably just going to deal more damage as well as a, probably a burn effect, if anything. That doesn't do it. Yeah, it does a burn effect. Okay, cool. It looks like it does a burn effect on, on the character. Uh, Radiant Clone. Dash backwards, leaving a Radiant Clone. The clone will taunt nearby enemies into attacking until it expires or is destroyed. That's giving me some low-key vibes from um, Warframe. It's actually pretty dope. I like it. Ground Zero. Silas sends out sends egg out to shock all enemies in the area for a short time slowing them and dealing damage over time that's pretty cool um more vobin vibes to be honest um his tesla coils that he shoot that he throws out on the ground we didn't go over wingrave's um weapon but um yeah let's, we'll, we'll go ahead and go back to wingrave um rather we'll fix it in the edit <laughs> uh so silo's weapon is long shot long shot was built by silent vex the first strike. He won the for he won the fortune from Avar Reeve in a high stakes shooting contest and used the gold to found his network of smugglers. Weapon ability is um, Dead Eye. Dead Eye. Three Dead Eye weak spots appear on every enemy in range. So this is a pretty big range. It's like it's gonna have to be because like if there's like a bunch of enemies in a cluster, is it gonna equip on all the enemies or is there gonna be like a minimum amount? I mean the maximum amount of enemies that it goes on to. We're gonna have to figure this out when the game drops. Um, hitting these weak spots will result in high damage and guaranteed crits. That's pretty dope. So Nis, we are on Nis now. This is the Shadow Dancer. Her complexity level is high, um, and her parameters definitely going towards offense. So Nis got some um, ninja vibes going on here with her skills. Dash online, deal damage after a short delay. Gloom clone will dash from your initial position to you, dealing damage to the enemies. And that looks pretty cool, to be honest. Second skill, Umbra Aura. This is empowered by Umbra Magic, causing her next three dodges to pierce nearby enemies with a shadow. Okay, that's cool. Uh, Vengeful Shade, briefly become immune to attacks and damage enemies in front of Nis. So you're immune to attacks. Oh, I see where you come. You turn into a shadow. You throw the um, I guess the the shurikens, I guess, or the the knives. And then you um you do a back dodge as well. And then Gloom Shroud for the next few seconds, Shadow Step can be used at no cost. You pretty much become the fourth Hokage right here. And you're just dashing around, smacking enemies with your clones. That's dope, I like it. And her weapon is gonna be Knight's Edge, the Ancestral Blade of Duskull Eldrin. The spirits of the fallen Duskull are bound to these daggers and strike out at enemies worthy of a wield wielder. Blah. And her ability is gonna be Dagger Fall. Forms magical daggers that float around the player and fire towards enemies as attacks when enemies come in within range. That's actually pretty cool. I like I like um, abilities like that. I like floating weapons behind the behind the character. I'm a nerd like that. Um, Senja. I like Senja. Senja's probably gonna be my main to be honest. I love barbarians. I don't know why. I love gladiators, barbarians, those style characters. I've been falling in love with them. Like I love my mage, but I don't see a mage in this yet. So we have to probably go with Senja. Uh, Senja's complexity is high apparently. Um, she's a defensive character mostly, it looks like. Um, oh, so it shows here there's a number on each of these. What are these numbers? What do these numbers mean? What do they mean? Because that's a three. That's a eight. Is that a three or eight? That looks like an eight. That looks like an eight. That's a five. That's a six. So yeah, that's an eight. It looks like a three, but it's not a three. Because a three looks like that. Okay. Sorry, um, but Senja's the champion. And so her ability is called Gladiator Pomo. And she look look at her little face when she does that. I like that. Let's, let's, let's look at that. That's, that's actually pretty funny. Like she's showboating. <laughs> anyway, punch forward, then hold the show hold to showboat. And he even says this, she showboats. On release, Senja punches again and buffs her next weapon attack. Uh fully showboating increases the damage of the follow-up punch. That's cool. Okay. Gain favor. Hold the showboat. So she's gonna be showboating a lot. I like her. She's gonna be my character. Um, she's gonna be my, my first character. My probably my main to be honest. 
Uh, holding, hold to showbo for a roaring crowd, filling your favor. Or in release taunts enemies while buffing Senja and her allies. Okay, okay. Her next ability is Lightning Grasp. Use lightning to pull all displaced enemies towards Senja in a large area. That's actually pretty cool. Hold up. Let me look at that again. That's really dope. I like that. And last ability, um, Grand Finale. In the form of a lightning spear, Senja charges to smash an enemy, dealing massive damage to them, fully filling the crowd's favor. I like that. That's actually really cool. And then her signature weapon is called Colossus, the ceremonial weapon of the champion of the Imperial Arena, used only in the most important matches. It's deeply insulting to use this glorious blade against goblins and shrikes. Probably gonna be using them against. Um, <laughs> the ability Gladiator Slice, perform a quick melee attack that buffs the next ability. Using Gladiator Slice again will perform Empowered Gladiator Slice, dealing additional damage up to two times. That's really dope, I like it. I'm gonna play her because she's like the only character I've seen so far that I actually really just like love um, And so Kairos is the war mage, but like he's a war mage. He's not like I, I like elementalist. He's just like his, his, I've seen the skills and they don't really appeal to me um, So He has the first ability called shadow rake breaks the ground violently dealing damage to all enemies in front of Kairos, Arcane Fragments we can zoom to cast Savage Rig at no cost. I mean, that, that's that's cool. Siphon Radiant releases a wave of energy around Kairos that damages enemy and absorbs Arcane Power, reducing cooldowns and granting Arcane Fragment. Granting an Arcane Fragment. So is it going to be per enemy that, um, that he gets an Arcane Fragment? Is it going to be based on the enemy dying that he gets an Arcane Fragment? Like, I don't know what the deal is there. Arcane focus marks the enemy in the area. As enemies are hit, the mark builds up power and detonates at max or when it explodes. Hold up, I lied. I might I might have to um might have to take a look at uh at this guy here. I might have to Shockwave. Conjure shock and shock and off from the sky, resulting in a gigantic fist dealing damage in the area. And it's not my style. Like I want an elementalist, bro. That's what I want. The second of her name is Epitaph. Crafted by infamous mother of shadows, Epitaph feeds on the essence of enemies, even as it spills their blood. It whispers to you, urging you to battle. I like it. I like it. I'm not gonna lie, I like it. Um, <laughs> the weapon ability is Arcane Harvest. Arcane Harvest deals damage in a 360 degree arc um, and steals ability power from enemies. Increase the player's ability power, increases the player's ability power per enemy hit. That's cool. Um, but yeah, those are currently the um the characters that are here. I think there there's like one character that is labeled as redacted right now, actually. Um, that should be revealed, I'm guessing soon or maybe before the game launches, I'm not really sure. But she might be what we're looking for as a mage, as a elementalist style character. We'll see um in the future. Who knows what's gonna happen with this character? I'm looking forward to to see what this character brings to the um to the game. Well, so what character out of these characters do you think you're gonna be playing? Are you gonna be playing Wingrave, Silo, Nis, Senja, or Kairos? Like I said, personally, I'm leaning more towards Senja. I might be, you know, um, subbing Silo as my secondary, but Senja's definitely gonna be my main, and Silo will probably be my secondary character. Let me know what you guys think in the comments who you're gonna be playing um, when it comes to your main, your, your secondary. If you're gonna do a secondary, if you're just gonna be playing a main, and just mastering that character. I mean, that's cool too. Everybody plays their own way. But that's pretty much it for this video. Thank you guys for watching. I'll catch you guys in the next one. It's been SK and peace out.